Hello, this is Jeff Baldwin of Space Coast Cyber. This presentation is going to be a presentation on the Certified CMMC Professional CCP Training, What to Expect December 2022. I always date every presentation because information can change. So if you are watching this from the future, then the information in here may no longer be up to date. It might be a more up to date video for you to watch. So purpose of this presentation is to level set expectations for CCP training, answer some of those common questions you might have, and decide, help you decide if you want to pursue CCP training, if this is the right thing for you or not. And the agenda that we'll cover is what it, what is the CCP, why get it, what is the training cover, what is the training not cover, why take the training with me, what is the training format, and how do you sign up. So those are things we're going to cover today. Prereq, so if we're coming into this video, you've never heard of CMMC, well, certified CMMC professional probably is not going to mean a whole lot to you. So I do have another video on the topic, the five W's of CMMC, the who, what, where, when, and why. So there's a link to that video. You can check that out and then come back to this video. And then this video will make a little more sense to you. So what is the CCP? Uh, CCP is actually the first level uh, certification that you can get through the CMMC AB or the Cyber AB. So the Cyber AB is uh, doing individual certifications and the CCP is the first one. And once you have your CCP, then you can participate on assessment teams from a C3PO perspective. And then you'll be able to perform assessment of level one practices without supervision. At and then if you want to do level two, then you need to get the CCA or the certified CMMC assessor. So CCP is the first step, then you get to a CCA. After that, you can't skip the CCP and go straight to CCA. So it is a sequence that you have to go through. Um, so those are the two current certifications that are available as the certified CMMC professional and then the certified CMMC assessor. There is another option if you wanted to, just for your reference point, it's called a registered professional. It's not a certification. You're just more registering that you are interested in CMMC. There is training for that. The training does not have a standardized test that, you know, is like traditional proctor timed exam. It's a fairly simple exam um, for that. I think it's just like a 10 point thing and you have multiple ch chances for it. So. What that really does is doesn't really show uh, a great understanding of CMMC, like a CCP would show a higher level of understanding, but really you don't judge people by their certifications anyway, but it's just an indicator that you can kind of use. Um, so there is the Cyber AB website we kind of mentioned, and I just want to go to there real quick. So going to the AB website real quick. Uh, under ecosystem, ecosystem roles, there's the assessing and certification, and then there's consulting and implementation. I uh, want to add something there, right? So the, the AB is kind of directing people towards getting the RP. So if you go to consulting and implementation, that's where your RP is and your POs. Um, however, and then they're saying CCP is under assessing and certification. However, what I wanted to say is that you can also be a um, consultant with a CCP. And we'll talk about why there's some advantages to that in a moment. But um, the, the one difference is if you are going to be a CCP and be a consultant, you cannot then go be a part of an assessment team that would then assess that company that you were just consulting for, which makes sense, right? You would, you wouldn't, you would uh, violate your level of independence if you did that. So, so CCP can consult or assess. So we'll get back to that. Uh, I just wanted to point you towards this thing, which is the uh, path to become a certified CMMC assessor at the end. We're really just going to talk about the beginning here with the train for CCP. Uh, that's really what we're talking about in this particular video. Now, I won't cover this whole thing because then this video would be longer. Yeah, so in the interest of time, we'll cover that another time. Or you can go here and check it out yourself. Uh, one thing we will talk about in a moment is the blueprint. So if you are looking for the blueprint, it's right here, and that's where you can find it. All right. So swap the view here. 
So why should we get it? We were just talking about that. So CCP really is introducing the assessment methodology, the assessment process, how do we perform assessments? And that's useful whether you are going to actually be an assessor uh, or if you just want to self-assess yourself then in the same way that an assessor would. So makes sense, right? If I'm preparing a customer or if I am my own company and I'm implementing, I would want to perform my self-assessment to prepare for my assessment in the same way that an assessor would assess me. So that's why it's really, there is a benefit to getting this knowledge. So like I said there in that third bullet, the best way to prepare for an assessment is to assess yourself as if you were performing a real assessment. And you know, that last bullet there is really just that it can check some HR boxes. So if there are any jobs that require uh, some sort of CMMC knowledge, having this would be an indicator that you do have some level of CMMC knowledge. So having a CCP does indicate to others that, hey, I have more than, you know, basic level uh, understanding of CMMC. So good for that. So what does the training cover? Um, so we just mentioned that blueprint. That's where you can get it. Um, I have it already downloaded. We'll open it in a second. But within there, there are six domains, ecosystem, code of professional conduct, source uh, governance and source documents. That's really the kind of authoritative sources of parts of the model. Um, and then there's the model construct implementation evaluation. That's where we're talking about the actual practices themselves. And then the CMMC assessment process and then scoping. So let me just hop over to that real quick. So here it is right here. Uh, and then there's that one part there, that note there. So anybody can take the CCP class, but there are prerequisites to take the exam. So if you did want to take the exam, um, here are those uh, prerequisites. So two years or a college degree. So college degree or two years of related experience or education or two years of equivalent experience, including military and cyber IT or assessment field. So that's pretty broad. Um, so it's just like, do you have a college degree or two years? That's the prereq that they're working with. They're, this is a suggestion of CompTIA A plus knowledge. And then um, there is no self-study option. So you have to go through a licensed training provider in LTP. So that would be the training that we're talking about right now this is the LTP training. And then just finish the, the sequence. There is the CUI awareness training, and it has to be within three months of when you take the exam. This is a good training anyways. I would recommend this training for anybody to take. It's good training. And then like we were just talking about, um, so if you are going to be an employee of an organization seeking certification or OSC, that's a, an intended audience for the certification. If you want to be a consultant to help out organizations, they're another one. Uh, if you want to be an assessment team member, that's always, you know, CCP is the starting point for that. And federal employees, so if you are a federal employee that's going to be working with CMMC at all, then this is another good way to show knowledge with CMMC. And then the exam itself, 170 questions, multiple choice, three and a half hours is how long you have to take it. The scoring goes from 200 to 800. Uh, the lowest score you can get is 200. The highest score you can get is 800. The passing score is 500. So 500 out of 800 is roughly 62 and a half. Um, so you need 62 and a half to pass. And this is not open book. So there is a lot of information, but it's not open book. So it's not super easy, but it's not super hard either. Because again, you only need a 62.5. And if you follow CMMC and uh, all the people talk about it every day, then um, you'll be pretty good on the exam. But so the blueprint itself, all of this stuff in the blueprint, regardless of who created the training material, because there is, I think, 19, maybe 17, uh, somewhere in that range of LPPs, and the LPPs create the training, and they get that training approved. The LTPs, the training providers, are the ones that deliver that training. So regardless of which training source is selected, they all are mapped to all of these uh, parts of the blueprint. So any of the trainings would cover these things. And then we're just talking about the licensed partner publishers, the LTPs, they, they create the material and then the LTPs deliver it. 
So that is what I wanted to say there. So we'll pop back over to slides. And there we go. So what does it not cover? Um, does not teach you that foundational cybersecurity. So that's why they kind of expect you to have two years or a degree. Doesn't teach you foundational IT. So if you don't know the difference between a workstation and a server or a laptop or removable media versus embedded media, things like that, you're not gonna really learn that in this course directly. Uh, there may be some of that in some of the discussions when we talk about some of the practices, but that's kind of why um, you can have some expectation that you have some of those knowledges. And it doesn't teach you how to be a lead assessor. It just kind of teaches you how to be a assessment team member, how to do the level one. Uh, my training goes above and beyond, and I will teach you, or we will go over the level two practices and really how to assess those ones, but that's not really required for the CCP. Um, but I want to cover it anyways. I think it's important, so I, I go beyond the minimum for that. Uh, and the training costs do not include your CPN, which is your individual number, and it does not include the exam fee. So, like again, you don't have to um, do either of those things. So if you just want the training and you don't want certification, then you don't have to get a CPN and you don't have to get C, uh, the CCP exam fee. So you can cut those out if you're only interested in training. But if you did want to get the individual certification, these are additional costs. These to uh, fees go directly to the AB, they wouldn't go to the training provider. They wouldn't go to me. All right, so why should you take the training with me? So I do have a good amount of experience, years of experience. So I have 17 plus years as a practitioner. So as an assessor, as an implementer, as a consultant, 17 years of experience with that. All of that's been in cybersecurity. And then 12 plus as an educator, so I'm adjunct professor and um, also been involved in some nonprofit training as well. So as an assessor, I have performed a formal assessment for over 150 systems. Again, that's not CMMC, but it was in the federal side. So FISMA, Risk Management Framework, RMF, that's really my background. So, and also NISPALM, so NISPALM, RMF, all that, that's kind of my background. So I have performed over 150 assessments, so I have good you know, experience from doing assessments, but above and beyond that, I've also been a system security engineer, and part of that has been helping with self-assessment, otherwise known as verification and validation, right? So verifying that things are built correctly, verifying that the system meets the actual requirements. So you can view all of those practices as desired outcomes, and if you view the practice as a desired outcome, then you can validate that you're actually achieving that outcome. So uh, without going on a tangent, right? I get yelled at for going on tangents. Um, so um, this goes back to my original thing that I said and it's towards the beginning of this presentation is that whether you're doing a self-assessment or you're doing a formal assessment, the assessment process should be the same. You should both look at 800 alpha, which is the assessment objectives the determination statements, those are all the same. You would go through them the same way. So getting the training and how to do that for self-assessments will prepare you for the formal assessments. So that's kind of why I've seen both sides of that as both an implementer and assessor. So I will know what you need to know for the test and I what you will need to know to be successful on the job because I do have a, a good amount of experience. So. When I am teaching, I will always say this will be on the test. This will not be on the test, but this is something I think you should know, right? And I always will tell you when I'm doing that. So I'm like, this is on the test, this is not on the test. So I won't tell you what the questions are, but I will tell you things you need to know and things you need to study. All right, so another reason is I do have a low price. So my course is lower than you can find elsewhere. And if you do find lower, then I will price match. And I do enjoy a good tangent, a good rabbit hole, and I am fairly good with time management, so I can keep us on track and on schedule while still having really interesting discussions, talking about hypotheticals and some of the stuff that's really beyond just the training material. So I can talk really on any subject that you want to go to on CMC, keep it on topic, keep it great. So, And then last, I am going to be honest and forthright, I'll tell you when 
things how they are, not how I wish they would be. And when I'm telling you something, I will tell you the different opinions, right? So if there's no source document, there's no policy, there's no directive, there's nothing that says something in writing, then you're being speculative. Um, so I will always speak when it's being speculative, when it's opinion, or when it's authoritative. So, uh, and beyond that, talk, I will also tell you what the current opinions are on a topic is. So, so what's the current opinions? So here's the different opinions, here's the different pros and cons and merits of each. So that's really going uh, beyond, but that'll be really helpful. So when you are dealing with other people, they may have a different opinion of you and you would really want to understand what parts are being speculative and which parts are authoritative. So I think that is another advantage because I do have some knowledge on that and keep up to date with what people are saying. So my default format is you have a learning management system um, and then you can log into that. You have a login for that. You can download textbooks, slides. There'll be some online modules you can go through on your own time. Uh, that's the asynchronous part. The synchronous part would be that live instruction two nights a week for five weeks, one and a half hours per session. So it allows you to absorb the material, allows you to do some readings ahead of time to bring some questions uh, to reinforce earlier concepts. Um, and kind of just like this presentation here, we go over slides, but we also will go over, you know, just me sharing a screen like I was with the blueprint walking through the blueprint, talking about things in more depth than I did in this video, of course, but so it's not just death by PowerPoint. That's what I'm getting at. And there are some activities uh, as well, but I don't get too crazy into those. Um, so yeah, that's the typical format. Um, there are other formats that are available, like a three-day bootcamp. I prefer just the non-intrusive two nights a week um, just so that nobody has to miss work, none of that. But if there is enough interest, then I can customize and do private sessions or boot camp sessions instead of the evening sessions that I have. So, how do you sign up and contact me? Uh, like I was just saying, public or private courses available. I did, and there's also a group discount. Uh, you can do purchase orders. So, um, if you got like five people in your organization, 10 people, whatever it is, you know, we can work out some group discounts so we can talk those things, through, took those things through. Uh, I'll just go to the website really quick just to kind of show you. I got it up here. So in the shop here on my website. <clears throat> so we got like the January course system. I'm going to show you a good format right now. So this is what a typical five week course would look like. Um, you know, here's the dates of them, 6 to 7.30 Eastern, and the topics that we go over that map to the domains, and then here's where I go into the in-depth of the different practices that go beyond what's required for CCP. So I think there is value in that, so that's what I want to do. So you can do it right here and register right here, or contact me and we can talk and work, things, some, work, some, work some things out if you prefer. And then we got one last slide, and that's going to be the context. Um, so CCP is not cheap. So not cheap, but not super expensive. Uh, just depends on what you want to do with it. So you can reach out to me on the contact form on the website, email me direct, or engage me on LinkedIn, where I am pretty active. Uh, you can message me there. Uh, I also have free resources and articles and other things that you can look at. So. That is it for the CCP presentation today. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a great rest of 2022 with the last couple of days we have left and look forward to working with you in 2023 as we progress with the CMMC ecosystem. Uh, cheers.